while the styles and rails that I just glued up dry, I'm going to start taking the time to, to start on the panels. Um, the finishing schedule for, this, for these panels um, is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to show you every step. I just want to say a couple of things about it, and then it'll be hopefully very brief. Probably one of the shortest videos I've ever done. Um, um, the first schedule is we're just using out-of-the-box um, uh, you know, components to this finish. A finishing schedule refers to the number of steps and the processes that you that you make. And if you count the number of you know sanding between the coat as a step, then your finishing process will have X number of steps or your finishing schedule. So I don't tend to count the sanding in between them. So this will be a six-step process. And essentially what it is going to amount to now, the client picked these colors, so they're off the shelf. Um, they're going to be straight out of the cans. There's going to be no mixing or anything like that. And, uh, and they're going to be just this plain. Now, we're not going to do a pre-sealing, which would be step one in a schedule normally. Um, they want them a little bit rustic to match a floor that they have. Um, and if I put a finishing sealer on this, these are going to look, I mean, they'll look gorgeous, obviously. They'll look very nice but in terms of the finish, but they won't match the floor as much as if, if we just kind of let the stain flood on and there was um, a little bit of blotching or whatever the, the rusticness is that'll soak in. Now, this poplar is not gonna blotch a ton. Um, you can actually use a finishing schedule that will dye poplar using dyes. I'm gonna show you that one day on the, on the videos. Um, using a red dye and other things, you can make poplar look almost exactly like cherry, such that unless you were an expert, people would not know. Um, but in any case, at a fraction of the price. All right, so in any case, the finishing schedule on this one is uh, dark walnut is going to be the first coat, and then that's going to dry uh, 24 hours. We do that so that if you wipe up any second coat, it's not going to pull up the first coat with it. So I want it to, to dry a full 24 hours. Then we're going to put another color on, the red mahogany. And what this will do is, it's not going to absorb as much into the wood um, as the first coat, because obviously the first coat got there first, um, but it will enhance the color of the, um, of the panel slightly. It'll have a slightly, I don't want to say red, because everybody freaks out when they say red mahogany. Oh, I don't want red. Red mahogany is actually like a little bit red, but mostly brown. So you're soft, softening up this dark walnut, you know, uh, pretty well to where it's a warmer but darker look and, and there's not that much red in it. it, it it's less than you would think and you'll see when I'm done. So that's step two of the schedule. Steps three and four are going to be clear satin finishes straight out of the can. This is just regular polyurethane satin finish, full strength. I'm not going to dilute this at all um, for two reasons. One, I'm doing the panel as it's laying on a horizontal surface, so I'm not worried about drips running over. I don't care about the sides, because those are going to be hidden by the, the styles and the rails. Um, there'll be two coats of this, and then two coats of this. And this is just the wipe on poly. Obviously, you're going to sand between each coat of polyurethane to get all the dust nugs out and everything like that. But once I get two coats of this stuff on, it's going to be enough or protected enough to, that I can move them around the shop. I can you know, do the finish work where I'm gonna add the styles and rails. I'm gonna be doing some sanding and then I'm gonna be wiping up the dust that's on there. I'm gonna be doing some staining. If a drop of stain falls on the poly, it'll wipe right up because the poly seals it. Um, so I just put a couple of coats of the wipe on poly because A, it, you know, it adds to the overall durable finish and B, if it gets scuffed in the shop while I'm moving it around or, or God forbid there's like a little light scratch on there, then I'll be able to fill that in with a couple of coats of the poly. So it's a six step finishing process, very simple, actually two colors, two coats, and then two coats. So everything's in, in twos. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, you know, I make sure that there's no pigment on the bottom of the uh, can. And there's pretty much no pigment here. Pigment here. I just use whatever I can that's clean um, um, in terms of these little stirring sticks. I find that paint sticks cut in half work great for this, uh, you know, pint size, uh, quart size um, containers or whatever. 
So that looks pretty good. I also stirred it before the camera, of course, so I can go quickly. And you'll just want to have a rag with you um, and try to get the dust out of it. I can tell you from personal experience that you're going to want to start with the far end. <laughs> if you start with the close end of something this big, you're going to be leaning into it. And let's face it, every, every one of us has, has been into the shop with a nice shirt on and it's turned into a not nice shirt that you can use in the shop all the time because you leaned into something. So I'm just going to dip right out of the can. Um, these boards are one by four, so there's 11 of them effectively making up this panel. And I'm going to just do about three at a time and then wipe it off. So three white, three white, three white. And you can see, you know, the first coat goes on kind of rough, but it's, I don't know if you can see in this light, so I, I do apologize. Maybe I'll bring the camera over here when I'm done. It goes on pretty dark. And dark walnut is dark. Um, and it's a dark brown, not really black, but it's a very dark brown. And it's not very soft, in my opinion. So by putting the red mahogany on it, you're basically um, lightening it and warming it. And so all I'm going to do is this, and I'm not going to you know, talk too much more about it. If you've got questions, obviously feel free to email me or um, you know, post them at the bottom of the comments section. I try to get to them as quickly as possible. There are times I get very busy and I'm you know, two weeks or more sometimes before I get to a question, but I will get to it. And if I forget, then just post it again or email it again, or email it to me. And then all I want to do is just make sure that I, you know, streak all the way down, you know, every so often so that I get rid of these, you know, uh, lumps of, uh, or, or puddles of the stain. So with that, I bid you good evening or good day or good morning, wherever you're at, and I will come back when this is complete. Hey everyone, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to show you a couple different tips. When you're done using your sponge brushes right away, you, you don't have to throw them, when you're done using your sponge brushes, you don't have to throw them away right away. Um, you can actually reuse them. Um, you know, if you wait till they dry, that's fine. They'll get nice and crusty, or you can just kind of dab them dry like this. And then if you take off the foam, which actually comes off pretty easily, if you just get your, your thumb under it, there's a little bit of adhesive at the top, and that's about it. And then you can, you know, wipe it off with a paper towel or whatever. And then all of a sudden, now you have a glue spreader and I use glue spreaders a ton especially when I'm making anything that's paneled um, so you can just spread your glue out and then just use this to basically spread it around um, you know whatever project you're working on so if you're kind of a, a you know a thrifty person I guess or whatever and you want to save uh, give your sponge brushes a second life go ahead and just tear the foam off and you've now got some some glue spreaders the other thing I would, um, they're a little bit cheaper and I feel um, even junk rags that you buy in the store, like these are just, you know, white general rags. They're not special purpose rags or anything. You can just get them in any old aisle. Um, you can also get these white rag stuff. Uh, and these are more paper towel. They tear pretty easily, but they, when you don't tear them, they don't leave a lot of dust or lint on the project. So. I wouldn't suggest using them at all during the finishing application, like um, you know, for polyurethane. But for wiping stain off, um, it you can just rip through these, no big deal, and it's a lot better than you know wasting all these good rags. So this is kind of a paper towel type thing. I actually bought those by accident. I looked at the thing and said, "Oh, it's white rags." I didn't read that there was paper cloth. So these are more of a paper product, but um, works really great to absorb all the XX. S excess stain you know that you uh, that you have laying around in, in puddles after you apply your stain so two couple of good tips uh, for finishing and everything like that but uh, just thought you might want to know thanks again